This is my Bible. It is the Word of God, and it is the will of God for my life. I am who the Word says I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the Word says I am, seated right now in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in the place of authority, dominion, and power. I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine. And I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Today my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. So I'm taught the Word of God. My life is changed for the better. And I will never be the same again. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of victory and you may be seated. So we headed out in this uh, thing of seed faith giving last Sunday on Easter Sunday, and we're just going to stay with it. And I want to bring you a message this morning, the miracle of seed faith giving. My dear friends, I have become so alarmed by the inflation numbers. I have decided to once again teach Oral Roberts principles on the miracle of seed faith giving. I've only done this once before in the history of the church the year we moved in here in 2006, a woman in our church reports that out of all the products her company represents, they are up on average 30% in one year. And a young man in the church reported to me that his family just crossed the $1 million mark in net worth. And I asked him, do you feel wealthy? And he said, no. You've got BlackRock buying up homes. You've got Bill Gates buying up farmland. You've got Biden printing $1 trillion every six months. It's literally a recipe for disaster for the middle class and especially for retirees. Millions will slide into poverty in Biden's four years. Millions. This is where we are as a country. And so if God's people do not learn how to walk in miraculous financial provision and start believing God and start confessing His Word and start following the leading of the Holy Spirit and start taking action on the Word, millions of Christians in this country will sink and slide from the ranks of the middle class into the ranks of the poor because of inflation. And I do not want this to happen to you. So here we go. Tell your neighbor, here we go. Here we go. Tell the other neighbor, this is, it. this is it. So here we go teaching you what I have not taught in 16 years from one of my daddies in the faith, Oral Roberts, the miracle of seed faith giving. The great apostle of faith and healing, Smith Wigglesworth, used to say that Mark 4:28 was his favorite verse in the Bible. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. This ties into last Sunday, the teaching on seeds and how God created everything to operate by seeds. And the exact opposite of what the world is telling you, it's all predictable. You know, this week we had some sod laid in our backyard because we have so much shade. The grass had died out, had sod late, and I stood there and I told someone that was doing some work in my house, I said, isn't it amazing? Down there on the coast, they have farms. And I said, and they sow this grass seed, and by and by, they have sod, and then they cut it, then they sell it. And then they start all over, and they sow seed, and it grows into sod, and then they cut it, and they sell it. I said, it is a license to print money forever. Are you hearing me? But you don't plant uh, grass seed and get tomatoes. It is entirely predictable. But what they're wanting everybody to believe out here is that it's all unpredictable. It's a lie. The way God created the earth, it is entirely predictable predictable. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. So over the next few weeks I'll be teaching on 
the miracle of seed faith giving. And I'm going to show you how you can use this principle in your life to step up to the next level financially. And because of all the money printing, you're going to have to employ supernatural principles of God just to stay even. I mean, if things are up, listen, people vote for this liberalism because they say they're going to help the poor. Rent, rent in the United States of America is up 100% in a year. In a year. So how does that help poor people? Talk to me. How does that help poor people? It doesn't. So if our giving is not a stretch, our giving is not faith. Say it out loud. If my giving is not a stretch, then there's no faith in it. So I'm going to stretch my faith. <laughs> Look, you got to get with it. You know, Dodie Osteen would have a Stretch Armstrong, and I bought a big old Stretch Armstrong and used it in these illustrations until he got old and brittle. Thank God I didn't get old and brittle. <laughs> he got old and brittle, and I'm standing there on a Sunday morning up at I-30, and I said, you got you to be like Stretch Armstrong. You got to stretch your faith, and an arm popped off. Amen. <laughs> but anyway, and I've looked. There's no more, you know, and even if they were, they haven't been manufactured. They're old, so, you know, I don't need to break another one. But anyway, so, so do it like Dodie Osteen used to do. Say, you got to stretch your faith. Yes, stretch your faith. Amen. Amen. Now, now, you might say, you know, I don't know about that. Well, name somebody more successful than John and Dodie Osteen. So it works. Amen. Amen. Say it out loud. So I'm going to stretch my faith. I'm gonna stretch my and I'm going to step up to the next level financially. Now, look, let's look at this passage in the NIV, Mark 4, 26. And also, he also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or get up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head, as soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle in it because the harvest has come. Now, every time I read those words in the Gospels, I pay extra special attention. This is what the kingdom of God is like. When you hear those words, read those words, he's telling you how it works. And what happens in this kingdom of God? A man scatters seed on the ground. And what is the result of doing what faith people do in the kingdom of God? Verse 28, all by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. Uh, a man in our church, Chris Rupert, is doing a video or doing video work for Southern Methodist University in Dallas. And he says their green light for construction, starting construction on a building project is when they have 80% of the money raised. That's an astounding figure. Because, you know, I don't know how much we had when we started I-30 or how much we had when we started here, but I assure you it wasn't any 80%. You know, after Cho got in trouble on his big building on Yoido Island, after that, his number on a green light signal was 50%. But it's pretty amazing. They use 80% as their number, and they're currently raising money for a building project and since October of 2019, they have raised $170 million. I'm telling you, there's oceans of money out there. There are literally oceans of money out there. You just have to go get some. Tell your neighbor, go get you some of that money. Tell the neighbor on the other side, go get you some of that money. Because I'm telling you, there's oceans of money out there. I mean, they're printing a, they're printing a trillion dollars every six months. I mean, there's oceans of money out there. So the money is out there and it is possible for the people of God to have big money and it is possible for the people of God to, big, to give big money, but first they've got to determine to give that big money and then second, they got to get their hands on that money. See, it is possible for God's people to have big money and give big money, but first you've got to decide you're going to be a giver of big money and then you got to go get your hands on that big money. I'm talking this morning about what the kingdom of God is like. Say it again. If my giving is not a stretch, 
There's no faith in it. One day, many years ago, I was walking along the Champs Elysees in Paris praying. And I was walking, as I was walking past a five star restaurant, the Lord reminded me of how Sue and I bought lunch for a missionary couple back there in 1983 when we were on our way back to the United States after serving as missionaries in Kenya. And the Lord reminded me of that act of kindness toward some of his missionary servants way back when we had next to nothing. That meal cost a couple, couple of hundred dollars back in 1983. And up to that point in our lives, that was the most money we had ever spent on a meal, even counting our once a year anniversary celebrations. And we did it for missionaries. We did it for servants of God. This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. I'm talking about what the kingdom of God is like, scattering seed. Back in 1977, Sue and I had next to nothing. We had no money, and we were living in a seminary duplex over at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. The rent was $84 a month. Yet, we gave God $1,400 left over from the sale of a car for $2,200. In other words, we would bought it for $2,200. It had trouble. We sold it for $1,400. And that was in 1997. And if you bring those $1997 up to 2022, that would be the equivalent of $20,400 today. This was an offering above and beyond the tithe. Within six months, I had a full-time salaried position in the ministry, and we owned our own home instead of paying rent. And within 30 to 45 days, somebody gave us a car to replace the one that we had sold that had caused us a lot of trouble, and the one that was given to us was a much better car. It wasn't new, but it was like new, and it was under warranty. And God has been blessing us ever since. I'm talking about what the kingdom of God is like, scattering seed. I looked up our tax records from 1977, the first full year of our marriage, and the year Sue and I gave that first $1,400 faith gift above and beyond the tithe. In 1977, I, learned, I earned $5,358 working part-time while working on my master's degree full-time, and Sue earned $5,134 working full-time while she was working on her bachelor's degree, finishing her bachelor's degree at TCU part-time. So $1,400 was the equivalent of 1.6 months pay for both of us or seven months pay for both of us in our first full year of marriage. So I'm not in any way implying that people should start where Sue and I find ourselves today. But what I am saying is you can work your way up to that level and even higher levels because with seed faith giving, there is no limit. Say it out loud. With seed faith giving, with seed faith there, is no there is no limit. Say it again. With seed faith giving, seed faith there, is no limit. there is no limit. When Sue and I got back from Africa, all we had was about $20,000 in cash and that was the profit from the sale of our first home in Fort Worth after the tithe. That $20,000 is what we had and all we had, and we used that money to pioneer Faith Christian Center. If you bring that $20,000 up into $2022 because of inflation, that would be $86,685. And today, this ministry owns at least $20 million in assets. I'm talking about what the kingdom of God is like, scattering seed. In other words, $20,000 has evolved into $20 million, and it's how the kingdom of God operates. This is how the kingdom of God operates a man scatters seed. At the end of 1992, Sue and I had about $76,000 in cash, almost all of it in retirement accounts. That's what we had, and that's all we had. February of 1993... I got a little confused on this Wednesday night. I'll clear this up this coming Wednesday. In 1992, Winter Bible Seminar, Dad Hagen did a message called Days of Heaven Upon the Earth. Well, he must have liked that message so much. All of the 1993 Winter Bible Seminar was Days of Heaven Upon the Earth. It was one night in 1993, February of 1993, that it just really registered in our hearts. And we get to the restaurant over at the Marriott in Tulsa. 
were having dinner after church and in walked John and Dodie Osteen, in walked Aretha Hagen, and by and by in walked Kenneth Hagen. And uh, Sue looked at me and I looked at her and I said, go ahead. Now listen, don't miss Wednesday night. What I'm talking about here is how the kingdom of God operates. And what I'm talking about here is the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. We had never been taught this. We had never even heard of it. We had never heard a story like it. And so she wrote out a check for $2,500. And in, the, in those days, that was a lot. And probably the bulk of what we had in our checking account. And uh, she wrote on the, the notation, Days of Heaven Upon the Earth. And she walked over there and gave it to them. From us to them. I'm talking this morning about what the kingdom of God is like. Our problem is, as Americans, the further we get from the land, the dumber we get. People think groceries come from grocery stores. I mean, how many here this morning are old enough to, to remember wringing a chicken's neck or chopping its head off? I got my hand up. Okay, but look around the room. We're only talking about 10%. People in 2022 America think chicken comes from packages. Amen. It does not. It comes from critters that have to have their neck wrung or chopped off. Amen. Amen. And you put chickens out there, and what do chickens produce? Confused uh, rabbits. If you put, if you got chickens, what do chickens produce? Chickens. I mean, this is this. Now, don't post this on Facebook or Twitter because you'll probably get censored or deleted or whatever. But this is science. Amen. Amen. Chickens produce chickens. Pigs produce bacon. Mm. Amen. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Hallelujah. And that night, that night, was the watershed event of our lives financially. That was February 25, 1993. Now, I'm going to get into this Wednesday. I don't have time to rehearse it. We'd already, we'd already seen a wealth, a wealth transfer in 1991 following the leading of the Holy Spirit. But I think that happened that night in February of 1993 because of what was going to happen later. In the summer of 1993, God told me to give my first Harley Davidson into the fall challenge offering in October of 1993. So I sold that motorcycle and gave the $15,000. Now, this was a big deal, and I, I can't tell the story. I don't have time. But no self-respecting Word of Faith minister can have debt on a Harley Davidson. And so I, I made a deal with a dealer. I'm going to send you $500. I'm going to send you $1,000 every time I can because it was wintertime when I bought it. And I said, when it's paid off, I'll come get it. And I didn't. I had my brother-in-law pick it up. But the point is that uh, it didn't just happen. It didn't just fall off a tree. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of saving. It, was a, it, was, it took effort to have that Harley Davidson. And I'd owned a Honda previously in my life, but I don't even know that that qualifies as a motorcycle. So this was my first genuine bona fide motorcycle. And, and it had no debt on it. You saw the picture. I was proud of it. And the Lord said, give it. Well, see, I'd learned that lesson. Or I'd, been, I'd heard that teaching on days of heaven upon the earth in February of 1993. So we gave it. And within 60, and within 60 days, within 60 days, Within 60 days, we had a 60-fold return on that $15,000, $900,000. So from before we gave that $2,500 to Kenneth Hagan, and before we gave the $15,000 from the sale of that Harley-Davidson, from 1992 to 2022, our net worth has gone up 136-fold. I'm not saying 136%. I'm talking about 136 fold. Now look, I see new people out here and you could be mad about it. It doesn't bother me in the least. I got so many years on me, I'm not even concerned about it. Listen, 
I'm here to declare that this living God is true to his word. Amen. And if you will work the word, the word will work for you. Amen. So I've been working it. So why would, why, would I, why would I allow it to get to me if somebody's upset with me working the word? You know, I've been working on my weight now for a while, and uh, most days I'm hungry. And so, you know, if somebody's mad about me losing weight, well, they didn't put in the work. They didn't put in the effort, and they don't feel hungry all the time. Are you hearing me? So in other words, I'm just not going to be moved by somebody judging me. But I am here to declare that my God is a truth-telling God. Amen. And you can take every... Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And I'm here to declare, without apology, that the word of God is true. The word of God will work. The word of God will work for anybody who dares to believe it and confess it and take action upon it. But we live in a culture of judging. You know, everybody judging. You know, judging. Well, doesn't matter to me. Amen. Because I know where I got it. And it wasn't from making people happy. I'm talking about what the kingdom of God is like. I'm talking about scattering seed. And since Sue and I got married, you think, you think that number is a grabber? Since Sue and I got married, I keep the math on a spreadsheet. I, all I got to do is glance. I see it. Since Sue and I got married, God has multiplied our net worth by 1,045,000%. 1,045,000%. Hallelujah. I want you to understand who we're singing to on Sunday mornings. I want you to understand the author of the book, hopefully that you have with you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is a truth-telling God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he is as good as his word is, and he is good, and his word is good, and you can count on God, and you can count on his word. Amen. But you got to do something about it. See, that's the problem. I'm talking about what the kingdom of God is like, scattering seed. And since God told me to take Oral Roberts' book, The Miracle of Seed Faith, on vacation, October of 2017, our net worth is up 114% in the midst of this man-made coronavirus panic. I'm talking about what the kingdom of God is like, scattering seed. Now, this is exactly the process that I used in Bible school to make money to pay my tuition and take Sue out and do all that I did. I was never taught this. I never heard about this. I don't even know how I knew to do it. But this is exactly what I did. Because that was what they called outside sales. We, weren't, we didn't have salary plus commission. We weren't paid by the hour plus commission. It was outside sales. We only made money when we sold. And I would sit there on Sunday morning in Central Assembly of God in Springfield, Missouri, and I decided. Amen. I decided Amen. how much money I wanted to make that next week. I decided. Amen. Not Bernie Sanders. Amen. I decided how much money I wanted to make the next week, and I would sit there on Sunday morning, and I'd write a check to that church for 20% of what I wanted to make the next seven days. Amen. Now, how did I do that? I don't know. I'd never heard that. I'd never heard that taught. I'd never used that heard as an illustration in a message. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, the only thing I can think of is maybe in doing my Bible reading, I came across the story of Jacob. I don't know, but somehow I did it. See, your mind will betray you. Kenneth Hagin used to say that for the born-again Christian, the number one problem is not the devil. Because once you find out what Paul taught about the devil, you realize you have authority over the devil. 
He said the number one problem for the born-again Christian is the natural human mind. And your natural human mind will fight you every step of the way. See, but even back then, I mean, I was a boy. I I was 19 years, 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old. But even as a boy, I was not walking by the mind. I was walking by the word and I was walking by the spirit. I'm talking about what the kingdom of God is like. Say it again. If my giving is not a stretch, then there's no faith in it. So I'm going to stretch my faith, and I'm going to step up to the next level financially. And you better pay attention, because if they're getting $9 for a pound of butter... I don't see how anybody is going to stay ahead of all this money printing in the natural. You're going to have to go with God. Like we sang this morning, God going before you, God going behind you, God going on each side of you. Are you hearing me? Amen. 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 Every time I read those words in the Gospels, I pay extra, extra special attention This is what the kingdom of God is like. And what happens in this kingdom of God? A man scatters seed on the ground. And what is the result of doing what faith people do in the kingdom of God? Verse 28, all by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. So what if you're sitting here today and you don't have any big financial testimonies? Well, I would say you've never done any faith giving. I would say you've never employed the miracle of seed faith giving. But what if you're sitting here today and all of your big financial testimonies are old? Well, in that case, I would say that you have allowed yourself to get comfortable in your giving. It's like all the fabulous healing testimonies that come out of Africa. Why do they have such great big healing testimonies come out of Africa? Because the people are desperate and they don't have a bunch of alternatives. And so they look to God And they look to his word as their source. Remember when you first got saved? Remember the mess you were in? Well, back then you were so desperate. You were crazy bold in your giving. Why? Because you were desperate. And because you didn't have much to lose. So you were bold in your faith. You were bold in your giving. And you subsequently came up out of that mess God found you in. But over time, you've gotten comfortable. Over time, you have become more measured in your giving. Now that you have come up out of what, out of that mess God found you in, and now you have alternatives. See, when your back's against the wall and you're poor, you don't have alternatives. But now that you came up out of that, you have alternatives. You have lines of credit. You got credit cards, all of that. And when you were jacked up, nobody gave you any credit. Nobody gave you any credit cards. But now you have alternatives and God and faith in God are just one of your alternatives. The bottom line is this, you're not desperate anymore and your lack of desperation has shown up in your giving. See, you were desperate to come up out of the financial mess that God found you in and enter the ranks of the middle class, but you don't have that same sense of desperation to leave the ranks of the middle class and enter the ranks of the wealthy. I declare without apology on this Sunday morning that God does not mind his people being rich. God minds his people being covetous. And this Bernie Sanders doctrine is in the churches as well as in the culture. Coveting what your neighbor has is a sin. It is actually a violation of one of the original Ten Commandments. You are not permitted as a child of God. You are not permitted as a born again person to covet your neighbor's goods. But you are permitted to go out and get your own. You are permitted to believe God for your own. You are permitted to produce your own. Is anybody hearing me this morning? Amen. 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 I mean, what they're doing in these churches and in politics would be no different than you going over to your, you being a lazy, you know what, and you not doing any plowing 
and you not doing any planning and you going over to your neighbor's garden and stealing their tomatoes and stealing their cantaloupe and stealing their cucumbers because you're too L-A-Z-Y to have your own garden. And I'm telling you, it is not God. It is not godly. It is not Christian. And God won't bless it. But I'm here to tell you, without any hesitation, if you will dare to till your soil and plant tomato seeds, you're going to get tomatoes. Now in Texas, you may have to watch the watering and keep watering. And if you plant cantaloupe seeds, you're going to get cantaloupe. And if you plant watermelon seeds, you're going to have watermelon. And to heck with what your neighbor thinks. If they want to judge you for you having too many watermelon or too many tomatoes or whatever, because you put in the work and they didn't put in the work. I said you put in the work and they didn't put in the work. And let me tell you something else about this beautiful, wonderful, glorious earth that God created. You don't know how it works. You go to bed at night, you don't know how it works. There's probably not a person here this morning that has been trained in this at the college level. Probably not a person here this morning could even describe how it works. You don't know how it works, but whether you're awake or whether you're asleep or whether the sun is shining or whether the sun isn't shining or whether the moon is out or whether the moon isn't out, the seed knows its business and a tomato seed a tomato seed produces tomatoes and a cantaloupe seed produces cantaloupe and it does its work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It knows its business and it does its work. And you cannot even explain it. That's why we're at a loss sometimes. People want to judge us for what we have and we're at a loss for even how to explain it. Tithing. Go talk to a sinner about tithing. See how far you get. It's like, it's like, Uh, the mystery and the miracle of a tomato seed. It's like the miracle and the mystery of a watermelon seed. All I know is I, I believe God. All I know is I confess God's word. All I know is I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. All I know is I take action on the word of God and I keep pulling ahead 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 and I keep pulling ahead. ahead. Oh, my critics, my critics. Well, they're on the ground while I fly by in a citation 10 or whatever it is. Hey, how you doing all there critics, you know? Ankle biters, amen, barking dogs. What's a barking dog? Well, they're stuck in the yard and you're going someplace. And so they're barking at you while you're going down the road. Shout it out loud, I'm going someplace. Shout it out loud, I'm going someplace. Amen, I say let the critics criticize. Let the dogs bark. Let the ankle biters bite. Hallelujah. But I'm going to believe God and I'm going to confess the word of God and I'm going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and I'm going to be a doer of the word of God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to win and I'm going to prevail and I'm going to overcome until my last day. And then I'm going to cross over victorious. Hallelujah. Because my God is a truth telling God. He honors his word. 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 word. Somebody give the Lord a shout of victory this morning. Hallelujah. Well, I don't like that. Well, neither does Bernie Sanders. Well, I don't like that. Well, neither do the communists. And I don't care what the communists think or what Bernie Sanders think or what you think. Hallelujah. I found something that's working and I'm just working the heck out of it. Hallelujah. I said I found something that's working and I'm working the heck out of it. You ever had store-bought tomatoes? Have you ever had tomatoes on somebody's garden? Then you go back and eat store-bought tomatoes and you wonder, what am I eating? Well, this is the difference between you working your garden versus you trying to get somebody something, some, something somebody else produced. It's sweet. Hallelujah. See, you were desperate to come up out of the financial mess God found you in and enter the ranks of the middle class. 
but you don't have that same sense of desperation to leave the ranks of the middle class and enter the ranks of the wealthy. But I'm telling you, they are printing so much money. Goods and services are up 30% in a year. Rent is up 100% in one year. They are printing so much money, $1 trillion every six months. You're not going to be able to be a lazy daisy and stay in the ranks of the middle class. And I don't want to see you slide backwards. I love you and I don't want to see you slide backwards. I'm talking about what the kingdom of God is like, scattering the seed. We work this same plan of seed time and harvest in building this ministry. How did we get here? February of 1997, the Lord spoke me to put the roof on Bud Sickler's church, a half a million dollars. We got that done in 16 months. Then he said, set aside a million dollars for the new millennium. In the middle of that, December of 99, Bud said he needed another $100,000. We got that done. The next month, we finished setting aside the million dollars for the new millennium. A little late, April of 2001, I'm preaching in Africa, and the Lord said, go home and buy land. So we used that $1 million to make the down payment on this land. See, saving money, saving money, saving money. Can't do nothing without money. Saving money, hallelujah. If I had not obeyed God, listen to me. If I had not obeyed God, if I had not been a doer of the word of God, if I had not followed the leading of the Holy Spirit of God, if I had not set aside that million dollars, you would not be in this building here this morning. I am not the only beneficiary of my obedience. You sitting here this morning, you are the beneficiary of my obedience. Hallelujah, because I, di I did what the Word said. I followed the leading of the Holy Spirit of God, and we're sitting here this morning. Hallelujah. And uh, you parked on concrete. You come to this beautiful building. Hallelujah. And it's all refreshed, and it's all wonderful, and it's all like new. Hallelujah. And there's no debt on it. I'm telling you this morning, the Word of God is true, and the Word of God, it works. And the same God that has answered my prayers will answer your prayers. And the same God that has honored my obedience will honor your obedience. And the same God that has honored my being a doer of the Word of God will honor you being a doer of the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And then we're getting ready to write the contracts. This was three. Actually, this now was four pieces of land. And uh, we're getting ready to write the contracts. And the Holy Spirit of God whispered into my spirit, man, what about the mineral rights? Nobody was thinking about minerals back in those days, but we put it in every contract. And we, this initial... We've owned different acreages at different times. I think we're sitting on 55 acres here now, are we not? So the original 49 acres uh, was three pieces of farmland. We made the offer with mineral rights. We made them the same day because we don't want people talking. And when all three contracts were accepted with minerals. So we had it. And because we had the million dollars, well, we were able to secure the financing for the rest. But even without the third floor, without the second floor, without the sports fields, without the third parking lot, we were still a half million dollars short. And the Spirit of God took me again to Isaiah 54 2. Isaiah 54 2. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. Who's he talking to? The doer of the word of God. And these are the words God has repeatedly given me over the years. And today it's all here. Nothing has been left out. And the day we moved in here, we had more cash than the day we started. And today it's all paid off. We don't owe anybody anything except the debt of love. I came down to tell you here this morning that there is no shortage in God. Shout it out loud. There is no shortage in God. Shout it out five times. There is no shortage in God.
Now to some people, the topic of the Holy Spirit means something strange or weird. To me, the Holy Spirit is my shepherd. He leads me and guides me beside the still waters. He leads me and guides me into green pastures. He has literally led us into God's fat place. This is the only kind of fat that's good that I know about. Without the leading of the Holy Spirit and without our obedience, you would not be sitting here this morning. Now, if you get on the app and go back over the history I just gave you, you will see four common ingredients in almost every stepping up. Here they are. Giving, confession, following the leading of the Holy Spirit, and taking action on the Word of God. We're talking about the miracle of seed faith, and we're talking about what the kingdom of God is like, scattering seed. If the archangel Michael himself had come to me at Bud Sickler's dedic building dedication in J April of 2000 and told me because I'd given Bud Sickler that $600,000, which in 2022 dollars would be $3.295 million, and had passed the money test. Everybody say it out loud, money test. Money that six years hence, in 2006, I would move my ministry into about a $20 million facility, and over time I'd pay it all off. I would not have believed it, and I'm a faith guy. The reason it's hard for most people to pass the money test is because they cannot see where they could be in five years financially if they would go ahead and obey God and believe God and do what God was asking them to do. You cannot see the future. And that is why most believers never pass the money test because they're walking by sight. They're not walking by faith. They can't see it, so they don't do it. Now, let me repeat this. This is why most believers never pass the money test because they're walking by sight. They're not walking by faith. They can't see it, so they don't do it. I'm talking about what the kingdom of God is like, scattering seed. Now, I want you to understand, right now, we're not in a building project. We're, we have not even hired an architect yet. I'm not, so I, I want you to understand, we don't owe anybody anything. We got no bills to pay. We ain't got no bills. It's pastors, you know, trying to raise money. We ain't got no bills. Amen. We don't owe anybody anything. I am not trying to get money from you. I am trying to get money to you. I am trying to talk you into the Word of God. I am trying to talk you into the will of God. I am trying to lift up your vision so you can see that whatever you have done and whatever you have accomplished, it is but a drop in the bucket compared to what God wants to do in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to lead you and guide you into a fat place. Can I get an amen? amen? So say yes to the word of God. Say yes to the will of God for your life. Say yes to God's blessings, God's favor, and God's provision for your life. Say it out loud. God has a plan. A plan to prosper me. I'm not interested in the plan the world has for me. I'm interested in the plan God has for my life. And I believe that God wants to bless me just like he blessed Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, he's my daddy. You know, and I love him, and he loves me. Now, you know, people may have trouble with that, but let me rehearse that again. He's my daddy, Amen. and I love him, Amen. and he loves me. Amen. 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 He's not trying to diminish me. He's trying to increase me. Amen. He's not trying to diminish you. He's trying to increase you. Amen. But the fact of the matter is, <laughs> that's awful harsh. The fact of the matter is, this is a generation of word rejectors. That's what the Lord just said to me. Amen. This is a generation of word rejectors. If you would just put as much faith in his word as this old dark world has put into doubt, Dr. Fauci the last two years, there's no telling what God would do in your life. Because God has never lied to you, not one time. Amen. God has never let you. We let ourselves down, but God never let us down. We, let, we disappoint ourselves, Amen. but God never disappointed us. Amen. Say it out loud. He is my shepherd. He, is my shepherd. he leads me beside the still waters. 
He leads me into the green pastures. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack no good thing. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. As I seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, he adds all these things unto me. Hallelujah. Now let's bow our heads. You might be here this morning or maybe watching by television and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord and the Savior of your life personally and individually. See, this is where it all begins. It doesn't, faith in God doesn't begin with healing. Faith in God doesn't begin with success or prosperity. Faith in God begins by making Jesus Christ the Lord and the Savior of your life. And let me, let me just be perfectly frank and honest here. If you are not his child, he's not looking to bless you. He watches over his own family. So how many, how many this morning are watching online would say, Pastor, I've never given my life to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. See, Jesus said in John chapter 3, you must be born again. He didn't say it was a good idea. He didn't say it was highly recommended. He didn't say it was for the super spiritual. He said, you must be born again. Revelation 3, Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and he with me. How many this morning would say, Pastor, I've not done that. I've not opened the door. I've not said yes to God through the Lord Jesus Christ and invited him to come into my life, not just to be my Savior, but to be my Lord, to take charge of my life. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up, lift it up high enough to where I can see it. We're going to pray. If you're watching online, you can join us in this prayer. How many this morning would say, Pastor Gene, I'm away from God. I'm backslidden. I'm not living for the Lord like I know I should. But Pastor, I don't want to remain in a backslidden condition because I see that this world is dark and getting darker. I see that this world is insane and getting more insane. I don't want to be somebody who goes through life scared. I want to have confidence. I want to have the kind of confidence in God you've spoken of this morning. See, the Word of God says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many this morning would say, Pastor, that's me. Pray for me. I'm away from God. I'm backslidden. I'm not living for the Lord, but I don't want to live a backslidden life, not another day. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up, lift it up high enough to where I can see it. Yes, yes, yes. There's more. I said, there's more. Amen. Let's everybody stand. If you raised your hand for either invitation, I would like for you to be bold this morning. I'd like for you to gather your belongings in hand. Ladies, especially take your purse in hand. If you raised your hand for either invitation, I'd like for you to step out into the aisle and join me here at the front. We're going to pray. You may be here this morning and, and maybe you didn't raise a hand, but God is dealing with your heart. God's moving in your heart and you want to commit or recommit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You come on. Amen. I don't know why I keep thinking about thinking in Swahili in, in recent days. In Swahili, we would say karibu. Come on. You're welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something about this world. They want to corrupt the seed. They want to wreck children before they ever have a chance to even get started in life. But Jesus blessed the children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you something about children. And this is why Satan wants to wreck them. Regardless of nationality, regardless of race, regardless. You never met two more rascally parents than I had. Regardless of genetics, we don't know who's going to be the next Billy Graham. We don't know who's going to be the next Catherine Kuhlman. And Satan knows it. And that's why his solution is to kill them all in the womb. And the ones that escape, mess them up. And that's why here at Faith Christian Center and St. Paul's Preparatory Academy, we protect children. Amen. 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 So we bless the children. Amen. Everybody in the room, let's pray together. Pray the prayer out loud. People watching online, pray with us. Father God, Father God I, give you my life. I give you my life 
in the name of Jesus, I confess that I have done my own thing. I've lived for self. And I find myself very much in need of you and in need of a Savior. So I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord of all. And I thank you for remitting my sins, sending them away, casting them in the depths of the sea, never to be remembered again. And I thank you. I thank you for making me a part of your family and not rejecting me, but receiving me. It's in Jesus' name I thank you. Amen. Amen. If you would, go with Mr. Tony Lewis. He's going to give you a copy of my book, God's Very Own Child. Get you right back in the service. Amen, amen, amen. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 